Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much. Uh, what we'll do now is give you a quick overview of uh, the events uh, as we see them now with Tropical Cyclone Ida. Um, and we'll be obviously delivering some key messages for the community. Uh, now, Tropical Cyclone Ida is currently uh, uh, heading towards uh, the far north Queensland coast, uh, up on Cape York, uh, and it is heading towards an area of the coast that is relatively unpopulated. But it is the case that uh, if you look across the communities there, there are around 9,000 Queenslanders who will be directly impacted by this, uh, this system. And it is a significant system, and that's why we're taking it seriously. It's expected that uh, Tropical Cyclone Ida will cr uh, cross the coast uh, north of Cooktown uh, sometime around 10pm on Friday night. Now, that could vary by two or three hours either way, uh, and it is expected to hit the coast at around a Category 4, maybe Category 5 intensity. It will then turn more to the south, uh, diminishing in intensity and heading down inland, uh, down Cape York uh, towards the Atherton Tablelands. I'll now ask Mr Webb from the Weather Bureau to just talk a bit about some of the specifics. Uh, before he does, though, I want to stress the big concerns that people need to be preparing themselves for are storm surge, okay, which means in low-lying areas, water much higher potentially than normal tides, potentially a metre and a half higher than the highest tide you would normally ever see, a metre and a half, and that could be all the way down the coast through Cooktown uh, to places like Port Douglas. That's the worst case scenario at this time. But the other big concern, of course, will be the normal high winds um, that can cause uh, debris flying around, uh, which people need to prepare for. And finally, of course, very intense rain causing quite uh, severe local flooding. We could see hundreds of millimetres of rain in certain catchments, uh, fast rising uh, rivers and creeks, and also uh, the problems in some suburban areas, particularly as far, potentially as far south as Cairns. So I might now ask the BOM to say a few words on the back of that, and then we'll talk a bit more. Thanks, Premier. And good morning, everyone. As the Premier said, the cyclone, uh, severe tropical cyclone Ita, sitting well off the coast of the northeast uh, Queensland at the moment, uh, moving towards the coast, expected to intensify later today into a category category four system, with wind gusts uh, strengthening further, with wind gusts approaching 280 kilometres per hour. That puts it in the high end of a category four system as it approaches the coast. As the Premier said, uh, at this stage we're forecasting category four, but we're watching closely for any signs of any uh, more rapid development. Severe tropical cyclone Ida, that would put it in, the, in a similar uh, category as cyclone Larry from uh, the mid-2000s and uh, slightly weaker than cyclone Larry as it approached the coast as well. Very strong system and significant damages as it approaches the coast. At this stage, a cyclone warning has been issued for gales uh, developing in the next 24 hours in that part of the coast, and it could extend even further, the gales further, to places like in, into Cairns and Innisfail uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours. As the cyclone approaches, depending on whether it crosses at high tide, will drive the, the size of that storm tide. But really, at the moment, it's important for people to prepare as if that cyclone will cross at high tide, which is around 7 o'clock tomorrow night and uh, people in the area around that Cape Flattery, Cooktown area should be preparing as if a cyclone will approach them during uh, later on tomorrow. A significant system and one that um, preparations are, are well, uh, prepare, uh, have well commenced. Thanks very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what are people going to see? Well, they, they will see those damaging winds, they'll see significant rain, uh, they will see that storm surge, so people should be uh, moving away from the low-lying coastal areas in the, the area that the BOM have identified. Uh, we're particular, particularly, of course, uh, confident that uh, the local communities themselves, the mayors and the councils and their local disaster management groups are working uh, well on that issue right now. But there are potentially people camping uh, in areas along that coast. Uh, we're taking steps to try and warn campers uh, to, to leave the area and indeed national parks north of Cairns are closed. Uh, people will expect to see a significant uh, uh, disruption to the road network. So, for example, uh, the peninsula road between um, Mount Malloy uh, inland from Port Douglas uh, through to Cooktown uh, could, could be cut in two or three locations at least, and that would be the pattern for other roads across the area. So, People should be very much uh, sheltering in place. Um, 
after getting away from the, co the coast. Uh, I, I just stress that if they've been camping, they need to be away from the coast. Um, we've been asked particularly by the Surf Lifesavers to stress that uh, the beaches are closed as well and the stinger nets have been brought in as well. So from Cairns north up towards Port Douglas, um, those protections against the marine stingers, and it still is the season, have been taken away and we'd like people to observe the beach closures. We'd also like people to not go and start surfing on the higher waves, obviously, that are going to be generated by this cyclone because, again, they're potentially putting themselves and rescuers at risk. With these flooded roads, the same old message, and I'm afraid we keep seeing people take risks, if it is flooded, forget it. Uh, it is not worth putting your life at risk, and again, rescuers at risk, uh, if you go through those flood waters. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Deputy Commissioner Pointing to say a few, few words in a moment about the positioning of resources and personnel to support these communities. Uh, before I do that, I just say that I will be heading north. Uh, I will be going to Cairns and potentially Cooktown today, and my objective is to ensure that uh, those uh, local disaster management groups, those mayors and councils, uh, SES people are getting the support uh, that they need from state government and other agencies. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, a bit of an overview. I'll now cross to uh, the Deputy Commissioner. Thanks, Premier. <coughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Well, uh, to manage this event, we've appointed Deputy Commissioner Goldcheski as a State Disaster Coordinator, and Steve's uh, working full time on this event as we speak. Uh, the whole disaster management uh, system has been uh, kicked into gear to manage this event, and we've de deployed senior officers to uh, Cairns uh, to assist the uh, disaster management group. Uh, now, importantly, the disaster management group in Cairns is working with all those local disaster groups who are either leaning forward, who are actively planning for this event. Uh, that includes uh, considering evacuation of vulnerable persons, and in some cases that has started. Uh, places like Lizard Island, for example, have closed down and evacuated. Um, uh, the positioning of fuel and air assets is also underway, and of course liaison with uh, all our partners in disaster management, whether that's the ADF uh, or the fireys or the AMBOs, is all well underway. So very much uh, the operation at the moment is very much about preparation, and all that needs to be done is being done. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, Brett. Uh, look, again, uh, just to stress, the essential messages right now is uh, you've heard from the BOM where the, uh, the cyclone is expected to cross the coast. These things can change, but they're getting more and more certain about this track, and we know that it's a very intense system. The storm surge is an issue, so people could expect a uh, potentially much higher water than normal highest tides. They can expect severe flooding. Uh, they can also expect, of course, the normal problems from the very high winds, 280 kilometres an hour, the debris that flies around. Uh, people in the far north are used to these things. I'm sure that they will all be taking the necessary actions to secure uh, material around their homes and buildings, that they will have bottled water and the like and food set aside, uh, and that people will have a medical kit. I also say to people, uh, that they could expect that the power in certain locations could be out for three to four weeks and impacts on telecommunications. But again, I know the people of Cape York and the far north understand that and uh, used to dealing with these sorts of things. Uh, 